Hello from the Boeing University studio at the International Boeing campus in Arlington, Texas. Welcome to The Profit Break. If you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you'll be well on your way to improving yourself and your profitability. Whether you're a traditional Boeing Center looking to expand your game room or an ex existing entertainment center looking to get the most revenue per square foot, often the last touch point before the guest leaves is your prize center. So it is not surprising a lot of angst is generated on the redemption room versus redemption counter debate. To help us with this debate today, we have with us merchandising and training program manager from our Smart Buy partner, Redemption Plus, Ms. Megan Birch. Megan has aided in the planning for arcade redemption areas for more than 100 entertainment centers. She is the host of Eyes on the Prize video series on the Redemption Plus YouTube channel. Megan, thank you for joining us here in the studio and giving a few insights to our audience on this, this debate. So let's go right into it. What is the difference between a redemption counter and a redemption what, what's the uh, room? Store. Can't wait. Store versus counter. There we go. R wait, I still got it wrong. Store versus room. See? Room, Help me. Room, Help me. Room and store, interchangeable. Gotcha. So if we say room or store, we're good. One question solved. Yes. The counter is just... So the counter is what you think your classic arcade experience. So your guest faces a counter. It's going to have like a showcase, maybe some drawers with your small prizes in them and then you're going to have slat wall behind usually from about counter height upward with hanging prizes. The store or room is going to be exactly like that. A store that you walk into, you can walk around, touch, check out all the prizes and experience it as you would in a retail store. Well, now that we've solved my inability to understand the room store counter <laughs> concept, <laughs> how do you know which one's right for your center? Well, it really kind of depends on not only your size, but the experience you want to provide your guest. So let's talk about size. Games these days are getting bigger and bigger. The average game size is about 65 square feet. So for every thousand square feet of game room, you're getting eight to 15 games. Um, really about when you're getting up into that 2000 square foot or maybe 20 to 25 games or so is where a room is going to start to become appropriate. If you have a small room, you've got you know 10, 15 games. You're not, you don't need a huge um, store. You, the games aren't going to generate enough tickets to support that many prizes. On the other hand, if, if you've got a big, giant, eight, 10,000 square foot game room, and you have a four by eight slat wall and one small counter with bin items, that's not enough prizes to support all of the tickets that are being won. So really, for about Every 1,000 square feet of game room, you're going to want to have about 125 square foot of redemption space. So you're talking about that, balancing out that guest experience, right? Mm -hmm. so, so tell us how that all works. Sure. So the guest experiences a room and a counter very differently. So the counter, you, you have to have it attended at all times. The guest can't walk behind it and, and select their prizes. If they want to look at something, they have to ask for it. They can't just go back there and start picking things. Or they could, I suppose, but that's a whole other problem. Um, so it, they need an attendant to guide the entire experience. The room, they can walk into the room and they can self-shop. So they can walk all around, pick up their own prizes, look at it, touch the plush, hug the plush, you know, really decide and make their own choice of what they want. Um, a lot of times a, a, a guest is making their own first shopping experience for a kid. You know, they've earned these tickets and they are having a shopping experience where they get to pick out something on their own with currency that they've earned. So you want them to have a really fun experience and sometimes the store can provide that, you know, more retail level experience. Well, you talk at two, like you said, two different experiences for the guests, but that's two different staffing levels you're talking about here. So, so what's the differences in the staffing between the two? Counter must be attended at all times. Because the guests can't self-shop, you need to have someone there who is grabbing the prizes. They, if a guest wants to see three different things, they need to grab those three different things. They need to pick out that specific flavor of airhead or that specific color of splat pig and then check out the guest. Um, if it gets busy, you need to have multiple attendants on multiple scanners or points of sale. 
Um, whereas with a room, you can probably get away with one or maybe two people staffing that room, um, two on a, on a peak day, like a Saturday afternoon, um, because the guests can come in and pick out their own choice and then they just bring it up when they're ready to go. So a room generally will take less staffing than a, um, than a counter, but then again, you know, you might just want to have that difference in experience. Andretti Indoor Karting and Games famously refuses to do a room, even though they've got huge uh, game rooms that could support it, but they like that face-to-face -face interaction that their staff is having with the guest. So, you know, it, it really just kind of depends on what sort of experience you want to provide and what is going to work best for your guests and your center. The most important thing, I think, is having staff that are going to help guide that experience, whether behind the counter or in the room, charismatic, um, making that an enjoyable encounter with the guest. Well, yeah, you talk about how Andretti is willing to spend a little extra labor hours and things of that nature. So my brain operations guy thinks about the labor hours. What about stocking? Is there, is there one of them that's better when it comes to labor hours and things of that nature? So due to the nature of the counter, you're going to have somebody behind there at all times that they can, in between guests, they can quickly go through and stock. They can pull things forward on pegs or you're gonna have that built-in storage usually, the cabinets right below. So keeping those high volume items stocked so they can very easily grab in and fill when they have a little bit of downtime. Now the room, much larger, you need more product to support that room. Um, but something that you can kind of do to counteract that would be having multiple facings of key items. So samurai sword, for example, if you had one facing, you can get six samurai swords on a peg, you're gonna have to have somebody go out there and restock all the time. Whereas you can, you have that room, you have that space, you can do multiple pegs and put the full stock worth that you need for the day out on the peg. So you need to have somebody available to stock the room. It looks worse than an empty counter. An empty room looks worse than an empty counter and you don't ever wanna have that to devalue your experience because redemption is typically the last stop before they walk out your door. Um, so keeping it stocked is important. Uh, set up a stocking schedule that works for you. Or maybe on a room on peak days, peak Saturday afternoons, bring somebody in for a four hour shift just to stock and, and keep it looking full. Great. Well, that's, I mean, that's helpful because I was a little concerned about one being more than the other, but it sounds like they kind of balance each other out based on the needs of each individual of the two. Right. Well, now that we're talking about the two different, now that I've identified there's only two, room and store the same, <laughs> and counter is the third, um, are there any other options? I mean, or is this your only two ways of doing it? No. Uh, if, if you're wanting a more hands-off approach, there are machines like the Prize Hub or the prize that are essentially prize vending machines. Your guest comes up, scans their card, picks out their item on the machine, redeems it right there. So other than refilling it every so often, it's pretty well hands-off. So if you need something where you don't have a ton of labor hours and don't necessarily have a gigantic game room where you need tons of prizes, one of these machines might be a really great option for you. Okay, well that, that kind of solves maybe a, a theft issue. Is theft a, a big deal in either one or of these? That's something that um, operators ask a lot, especially in terms of a room, like what about theft? You're gonna have theft, you're just going to. But think about it in this term, with a room, you know, maybe are you gonna lose $2 worth of Smarties, small things people are able to grab and stick in their pockets? Yeah, you might, but is, it, is that $2 worth more to you than an extra 80 to $100 to have an entire shift in that room? You need to, you know, pay to have the extra labor hours to have more staff working a, a counter versus a room where they can come in and do the shopping themselves. So I guess kind of, really what's more important to you. Okay, well, the one thing, <laughs> we talk about this debate, why does it even matter? I mean, do we really even need it? I mean, what's the big deal? Yes, prizes drive gameplay. You will hear me say that over and over and over again. The games don't mean anything if you don't have the prize to back it up. You're not going to motivate your guests to go play the games if they don't have anything that they want to win for. And this is typically the last touch point you have before they leave and go out into the world of Google and Yelp reviews. So you want them to have a good experience, whether it's behind a counter or in a room. 
um, you know, they're working hard. They've earned these tickets. They want to spend them. And you want to put a smile on their face. Well, you answered that question pretty solid, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, well, you have time for about one more question. So in all of this, is there anything else that the, that the proprietor or the person expanding or, or, or even just starting from scratch that they kind of should consider if they're trying to do this the right way? Yeah, uh, you definitely want to have a kiosk either near the counter or right towards the entrance of the room so that as guests are ready to come check out, they can swipe their card and check how many tickets they have. Because if you've got a counter, you know, you will probably already have a line. And if you have to, your guest has to stand in line, come up, hand you the card, ask you, how many tickets do I have? And then do their shopping. That can really back up the whole line. So having that self-serve right there near the point of sale, you know, near the room that, or the counter um, can just really help make the whole uh, experience more efficient. Room counter or store. Room okay. counter store. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to learn more about Redemption Room and store versus counter debate, <laughs> please reach out to, uh, feel free to reach out to Megan directly at the information here on the screen. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're ready to start improving your profitability, you can reach out to us at any time at education at bpaa.com. As we wrap up, wrap up another edition of the Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing pe your people, people will grow your business. This episode, as well as all previous Profit Break episodes, are available 24-7 for you and your team at BoeingUniversity.net. Plus, new episodes are available every month. So mark your calendar, watch your email, and join us on Facebook to hear about the latest episodes. Until then, I'm Kelly Bednar, and do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.